Okay. I'm going to do a freestyle. Yeah. I'm in central London with Morgan at her listening party. It's popping. It's popping. I don't have no more. I don't have no more. Sorry, guys. Yeah, network. Why you waste eyes on me when me walk through? Why you waste anybody me at through? In the middle of the dance, me I walk through. Plenty body, everybody getting down loose. Make a mess, a mess, we can have a rando. I look away with the nephew. Uh. Everybody catch up under the top all in. Pull me in a little piece and get to warm in. We don't even need no words to get to talking. Me, I broke you in the water. This thing we have to wheel up, wheel it right up. One more sin and I'll be cup. This thing we have to wheel up, wheel it right up. One like we never get enough, no flow. I control it, why not roll it? Chase the sunrise, keep it going. This thing we have to wheel it up, up, up. Wheel it up, up, up. <laughs> Hello guys, hello and welcome back to Yeah Network. My name's Nyana Mena, I'm a presenter, journalist and host. And today we have something very special in store for you. We are here in the Sony headquarters with the one and only talented vocalist, songwriter, the girl that does it all. And she's wearing her boots that are made for walking. Her name is Morgan. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so guys, like I just said, we're here for your listening party. We've yeah. just heard your songs, we've mm -hmm. heard a bit more about your story. Mm -hmm. So how are you feeling? I'm buzzed. I after that, I'm buzzed. It was nice to see everyone's reactions. Yeah. And kind of everyone's head was bopping. I was looking, I was like, yeah, they like this, they like this. It was good. Very, very vibey. Absolutely. And we're gonna get into the midst of, you know, your EP that's coming out on October the twenty fifth. Yes. And like you said, you saw everyone's reactions. Mm -hmm. Is this the first time that you've had a, a large amount of people here to listen to your work? Yeah, do you know what? Like this project's been in the works for mm. The whole of this year, basically. Like, we've just been working on the creative and stuff like that. So I've not had a chance to actually play it to more than, like, three people. Because I'll play it to my mum, my dad, my mm. brother. But I've never kind of had that opportunity. So it's nice to see people all together. Absolutely. Together. And everybody was vibing in that audience. Yeah, they were. To every I was single song. It. Even yeah. the ones that were more of a ballad. Like, slower. Slower pace. Everyone mm -hmm. was still vibing. Yeah. That's how you know you've got a good project coming Let's out. Go. For real, for real. <laughs> so yeah, before we talk about Emotional Gangsta, mm -hmm. I want to get to know you more mm -hmm. as a person, Morgan. Ooh. I want to get to know the backstory. Who is Morgan? What is this like Morgan? a date? Could be. Date. Could be. It's a date. Oh, you got cool. your beats. I got me a... It's a date. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. So tell me, like, you know, you have come from a biracial background. Mm -hmm. Your mum's Jewish, you say. Yep. Your dad's from Jamaica. Yes. How did that influence you growing up? Do you know what? It was like something... It was quite a sensitive subject growing up because I had a lot of identity crisis moments mm. in my childhood, you know. I feel like we've all been through it where we like straighten our hair and we do whatever we do, but like to the point where my hair was breaking out because I wanted mm. to be like my friends at school that were white or whatever it was. Mm. There was always an imbalance with me, from within me. So I kind of had to grow up and find the love for myself. Mm by just kind of growing up and experiencing the world and traveling helped me as well to see different cultures and stuff like that. Cause I've seen so much of the world from mm. being what on tour. What sort of places have you gone to? I've been pretty much to every region, pretty much. That's yeah, the goal. yeah, 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 That's every, the every, every, every region. Every region? Yeah, every region. Every I've been, I've been everywhere, yeah. I've been everywhere. Yeah, so it was like, the more you travel, the more you realize that there's so many people that look like you. Mm. And, cause I went to school in a place where there wasn't many like brown people. So you grew up in Watford, right? I grew yeah. up in Watford and Watford's super multicultural, but mm. I went to school in a very suburban area. Right. There yeah. was literally, I was like the only, I was the only brown girl mm. and I'm mixed race. So yeah. there wasn't even like dark skinned girls. Mm. There was no variation in mm. race at my school. And it was difficult to see that because your own, you can only accept what you're surrounded by, really, as yeah. a child when you're like influenced. Mm. So I kind of, I remember crying and asking myself why I was brown at one point. Sad, yeah. I know. So I, I kind of went through that as a child and mm. then 
as I grew up, I just started to like love myself more. So you came into that, I guess, era of self-acceptance, especially yeah. like you said, you've been traveling, seeing different cultures. Yeah. And I guess you may have realized that, mm -hmm. you know, you've got your own tribe. Yeah. And there are so many people that have the same sort of experience with that. Yeah, and also it's kind of, you're very brainwashed with the beauty standard, mm. especially with social media. It can make you feel like you need to have your hair a certain way, whatever it is. Mm. And until I got to an age where I became like conscious. Yeah about what I'm absorbing when I look at my phone, that's when things really kicked in. So would you say that you kind of have a time and a moment for yourself where you switch off from social media so you can mm. focus on you? Well, I'm really, like, I, I'm on my phone a lot. Oh, same. But <laughs> recently, oh, same. <laughs> but recently I've been really, really trying to not be. Mm. I think it's hard because work pulls me towards oh, my phone. But if I didn't, do music, I don't think I'd even have an Instagram account, if I'm honest. Mm. Fair mm. enough. I'm not interested. Fair enough. I, I don't blame you. I don't Just blame not. you. And um, so you've spoken a bit there about, mm. you know, what it was like for you growing up. You had a bit of an identity crisis. Yeah. Would you say that music was that sort of outlet for you then? Definitely. Like, music was my outlet for everything in my life. Mm. Um, literally everything. I would... I don't advise this, but I would, <laughs> like, bunk out of lessons and go play piano and mm. do things like that before I dropped out of school. Like that was my thing. I would use that because I, I had a lot of anger within me as a child yeah. because of identity crisis and like other things. I, I got picked on for my hair mm. sometimes. So I was kind of always... You've got beautiful hair, by the oh, way. Thank so you. for all of you bloody haters <laughs> out there, that made Morgan feel bad. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then it kind of, yeah, it just, that was my outlet. Music was always mm. my outlet. And so I saw somewhere that, you know, you started singing from the age of three. Mm -hmm. When, do you remember when you made your first song or when the first time you performed in front of a large amount of people? My first full song mm. was my song ADC2, which was like probably my biggest song. song. by the way. Thank you. I was listening to mm. it on the way here. Thank you. <laughs> it's probably like my biggest, that's probably like my biggest moment solo yet with no mm. features or anything. But... That song was the first song I completed, but I have started loads of songs. Like I used to write songs about my grandma and stuff like mm. that all the time. So I've always, I've always made songs, but that was the first proper one I'd say. Oh, yeah. amazing, yeah. amazing. <laughs> and so what would you say inspires, I guess, your musical taste, your sound, you as a person? Is there a specific person or an event that's happened in your life or a place that you've traveled to that's really been, you know, integral in your music? Um, Whitney Houston was a massive part of my upbringing. Mm -hmm. I would literally like sit and break down her riffs and her runs. That's that's kind of how I learned to riff and run really. really? Jessie J was another one because mm. she didn't come around until a bit later, but for me it was like, she she's hands down one of the best female vocalists to ever come out of the UK. Oh, like she's yeah. ridiculous. And um, she's someone I used to watch a lot, like mm. a lot. Her, Whitney, Jennifer Hudson, Beyonce, Rihanna, mm. were like, it was like basically all the I like the iconic. Yeah, the, the ones iconic, that soulful, powerful voices. Yeah. yeah. And, and just I that can definitely star. see that in you as well, that Thank star you. essence, that star power. That Thanks, girl. Just the star. <laughs> the star. Thank you. It's, it's giving, it's giving. So I want to take it back to, you know, what you were saying before about, you know, your background, mm -hmm. where you came from, mm -hmm. and obviously your latest release, a lot of it has got that Jamaican, you know, inspiration. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. So, I kind of just wanted to dabble into that. I feel mm. like I did it in my mashups and I'd never, I'd done it in ADCT. Mm. I call it AD, I call it audacity, but people call it ADCT. So I just call it what they call it to be honest. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I did it in, in that song and I just felt like people were so drawn towards it. Mm. So I was like, why would I fix, Shy something, away fix from something that's not broke? Like, yeah, let's just yeah. do it. Do you know what I mean? So I, just felt like the next era felt right for me to dabble into that. And mm. it's a part of my life. Like recently in the past four years, I've been going to Jamaica every year. Mm. And it just influenced me all over again in mm. my life to kind of, why not go back into that? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you said a lot of your following may know you from your song ADCC, mm -hmm. but I want to take it even further back from than that. So things like Rudimental, yes, Sigma. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's take it yeah. back to then. What mm -hmm. was like your phase back then? So with Rudimental, mm. they, they was they, that was the starting point of my mm. co my career in this industry. You know, I'd always made music, but they found well, I DM'd them yeah. when I was seventeen, and they responded, I DM'd them, mm. 
clean bandit Calvin Harris. I was just DMing don't, people. Don't I was like, words. let me just shoot my shot. Like, so why not? Words, for other people that are aspiring artists and they're watching you and you're like their idol, yeah. would, you test, would you advise them to like actually shoot their shot? If I didn't do that, hmm. I would not. This might not have been my situation right now. So I yeah. have to say, just just do it. You have to you have to put pride aside sometimes and just mm. like you don't know who's going to respond. Very true. You don't if you know. don't try, <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So what was that whole experience like for you? And I taught the world. How do you feel like you've grown since then? I taught the world from mm. like I met them when I was 17. I didn't start touring until I was 18. Yeah. But I toured from 18 till last year, and that was like. I did my last festival with them last year, which is sad because uh, I've been. Did you get they've a bit literally, emotional? yeah, they've literally watched me grow up. Emotional but gangster. They, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, <laughs> they're, literally, <laughs> they're literally like my older brothers. They protected me so much. They didn't let nothing happen to me. Like yeah. my dad felt comfortable to send me on tour at 18 because he knew I was in good hands. Mm. And I have so much. They're like family. I have so yeah. much love for Rudimental. I saw every corner of the planet basically with them, from before I was 20. So you've kind of grown up with them almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and oh. they took me around the world. Like I've seen. I didn't think I traveling was never something I'd put on my list as a child. It yeah. was always just music, music, music. But then I forgot that traveling comes with music. Absolutely. So when that happened, I was like, oh, I'm seeing everywhere now. And that's what helped <laughs> me with my whole like self love journey and yeah. all those things as well. Like what we were talking about earlier. And yeah. Finding your people. Exactly. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And you mentioned there for you, I guess it's important to have that relationship with the people that you're working with musically. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a bit more about some of the features you have on your new project. So Byron Messiah mm. is on Wheel Up, which is my single that just came out. So make sure Her. you check it out. Guys, it's so good. Her. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Um, yeah, th that was a that was a sick collab. You know, mm. it's so funny how things work because the year before that, I had literally, literally just heard Taliban's, mm. and I was that was my song of the summer. Tal <laughs> Taliban's by Byron was my song of the summer. Yeah, I would have never thought this time last year that I now have a song with him out so in the world. when that actually happened finally, mm. how mm. was you overwhelmed? How did you feel? Do you know what it's like? When you're an artist and you're collabing, mm. sometimes you, or just an artist in general, you do things and you don't realise how big or amazing the moves are that you're making are mm. until you sit back and look at it. Mm -hmm. And it's things like being here today that makes me realise, like, wow, I'm achieving my dreams. Yeah. Because, I've, because I did so much from a young age, from 18 with touring with Rudimental, like, I did mm. so much. I did... Some of the biggest stages I've done, Tottenham Stadium, I've done Glastonbury Headline. Like, wow. there's been so much I've done. Mm. So you almost become immune to doing right things so, like that. Yeah. And it takes sometimes it takes someone to to say to you, no, think about what you actually did, and, and then, then you realise you deep it. Yeah, and yeah. you deep it, and then you're like, wow. I think it's so easy to not appreciate the moment. Yeah, Do when you know it's happening. What? One of my mantras for the year going forward, right, mm -hmm. is live in the moment. Oh, yeah, I don't 100%. know if it's the same thing for you, but like you said, sometimes you can overlook all the things that are happening in your yeah. life, and then you have to look back and be like, oh, sh did that. Yeah. Excuse my language. Damn. No, I literally. <laughs> Damn. No, for real, because I when I did Glastonbury last year, we did a headline slot, and that was that was like, I actively said I was going to be more present because mm. usually I look out to the crowd. And you can look out and there could be like 40,000, 50,000 people in front of you. Yeah. And you're like, wow, there's 50,000 people in front of me. But because they're all like just heads bopping, you don't really like pay attention to it because you, you can't like see them. You can just see their heads like this. And you're trying to focus on singing <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. So on Glasto last year, I, I proper zoned in mm. to the fact that I was doing what I was doing in that moment. And that when I was a young child, I only dreamed of being in that position, you can and only, made it. Yeah. And you can only like, I don't even know. Like it's even mm. emotional to talk about it because you can't, uh. yeah, you can't, you can't ever imagine fully achieving some of the things that you dreamt about as a child. Can I just say, I really like the song Reverse. Thanks. And you mentioned there when we were in the listening party that you picture it being on a film. Tell yeah. me more about that. What sort of film? I think like a James Bond film. Yeah, it's giving, it's giving dramatic. It's giving, it's dramatic. It's giving drama. It's dramatic as hell, but I love it. Mm. It's a, it is a movie track, like it's a journey yeah. from start to finish. That song is, you can go through so many different emotions. Mm. When I made that song, I was originally in my head writing it for like Doja Cat, 
that's what I had in my head. Mm. I also had like the weekend vibes in my head as well. So it was kind of referencing my favorite artists yeah. and being like, I want to make a song like this. And then just getting in, letting my creativity out and then seeing what happens. And mm. I'm so glad I did that because I love that It sounded so good, honestly. <laughs> honestly. And talking you. about creativity, mm -hmm. is there anything that you have to do before you go to the studio to make a song? Like, is there a routine that you have to go through or some skincare products you've got to apply or some gargling of salt water to make the, the vocals crisp clear? Like, what do you do? Well, skincare is every day. <laughs> but, but in terms of like vocal, mm. Mm. I'm gonna say I, I do my warm ups. Oh yeah. But I don't really have like a what, set. What sort of warm ups? Can we go through some of them now? All right, it's like a. I like it. Okay, do you know what I'm saying? Can I have the lung capacity? Is that... <laughs> it's those kind of stuff. It's like stuff. It's not really like singing stuff. It's more mm. like breath, breath yeah, work. Breath control. Yeah. yeah. Which is nice because it kind of. It's like you're meditating. Yeah, I like it. In a way. Well, exactly. I feel like that's what music is about. It takes you on a journey. Yeah, It is almost like a type of therapy. All 100%. Meditation. Absolutely. 100%. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, we've spoken about your music. Yeah. I want to hear more about you as a person. What mm -hmm. does Morgan enjoy? Mm -hmm. I heard from a little birdie that you're a Spurs fan. Yeah. So, how did that come about? Are you? What are you? I'm a West Ham. <gasps> West Ham girl. Oh, East no. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm just... Basically, yeah. my tour manager's a massive West Ham fan. Really? Biggest you'll ever meet. Hey. Literally. <laughs> um, my dad's a... My dad was born and raised... Well, my dad was... Yeah, my dad was born and raised. Tottenham. Tottenham Fair born enough. and raised. Yeah, yeah. And then he lived in Wood Green. So all my family are like Tottenham, Wood Green area. I'm mm. like North. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It do was you, just... I felt enjoy... like I had to. <laughs> basically. So it was like ritual family. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really have a choice. It's always the way. It's always the way. Yeah. Would you say that you like you know, enjoy playing any sports or doing yeah. anything like that? I used to play football. I used mm. to run 100 metres. Um, really? Yeah. Fast. Yeah, yeah. Like a whippet. I'm yeah, gone. like a whippet. It's my Jamaican <laughs> blood. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to train in athletics and mm. I played a lot of football as a child. Wow. I was very sporty. I was like, you know, I was a, a massive tomboy when I was younger. I wouldn't mm. wear, I was, wouldn't wear dresses. I wouldn't wear skirts. Really? Nope. But there's nothing wrong with that. And no, I, think, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the world makes you feel like there is. Yeah. But I was true. such, I went from being such a tomboy to then like, I wouldn't say I'm a girly girl now, but I definitely love a dress, love mm. a skirt. But Would I just grew out of that. Would you say that you kind of embraced the femininity a bit? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Like I had to grow into that. I'm definitely still growing into it. I think in the past two years, my femininity is like accelerated a lot. But mm -hmm. that's because I've been around different types of people, like powerful women, yeah. things like that, that have kind of encouraged me to embrace that a little bit more, almost. Mm. I think it's, it's good to it's be feminine. It's about the feminine. circle you have around you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. But I'm a gangster too, so. Come on, emotionally gangster. <laughs> Why are we talking about that? Mm. Like, where did the name come from? Oh my God. So, to put it plain and simple, I yes. am an emotional gangster. That's like Break my that friends call me that. that like my friends yeah. call it call me emotional gangster, and it's just like I can be super vulnerable, super sensitive. Yeah, but I can also kind of almost have a bit of a cold cold side. So would you say there's different sides to you, and depending on who yeah. you are and how you act, how, you get a different side. How, how how do I wake up that morning? Oh, so which side you roll out of the yeah, bed? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can be a little bit of both during the day. Yeah. It depends on the mood swing. Do you know what I mean? I, <laughs> sis, I understand. I understand. <laughs> my manager's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and my boyfriend, hey, yeah. Hello. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, no, like that is. I feel a lot of emotion. Yeah. I'm. I feel everything, times a hundred. So you feel it deeply. Deeply. Mm. But the reason that I've don't fight that too much is because that's what gives me my creativity. Mm. If I got rid of that, I don't know how creative I'd be. In all honesty. Yeah. That's the biggest part of my creativity is mm. my deep feeling. Yeah. Inside of me. It's like that's that's what drives me to wanna write music, to mm. wanna perform, like all of those things. Absolutely. Those emotions, definitely. Mm. And on that note, lastly for our audience, mm -hmm. so, you know, the project's coming out on the 25th of October. Mm -hmm. When they finally listen to it, yeah. what do you want them to take away from it? Um, I think from each song, I think a lot of artists make projects and the audience can take away from the whole project. Yeah. For me, 
it's each song, you're gonna take away something different from each song, you're gonna feel a different emotion from each song, mm. there's gonna be a different story. So I'd say focus more on the individual tracks yeah. than the project as a whole, mm. because you're gonna feel so different about everything and that was intentional. I want you guys to feel that. So mm. yeah, definitely focus on individual tracks and you're gonna go through a, a journey. It's gonna be like being in my brain for the day. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> let me know how it goes. <laughs> I love that. Before I let you guys go home, mm -hmm. I want to play a little game. Okay. Like, it's not Niana without a little game mm -hmm. or a little twist at the end. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, the game we're going to play, in the spirit of Morgan, yes. in the spirit of you, my yeah. dear, we're going to play Wheel It Up yeah. or Wheel It Off. Right? right? Pretty much, it's just yay or nay. Yeah. So whether you like something, if you mm. do like something, and that's a bit of you, yeah. that's a bit of me, again, replay it. Wheel it up. It. Wheel it up. Mm -hmm. If you don't like something, you're a bit like, nah, wheel it off, mate. Wheel it off, mate. Wheel it off, take it by the side. In my words, I'd say sack it off, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to wheel it off today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly that. Okay, so to start the game, it will be a bit quick fire. Okay. So just go with whatever comes to your head initially. Mm -hmm. Macaroni and cheese. Wheel it up, depending on who's cooking it. <laughs> <laughs> Not the shade. Mm -hmm. the shade. Oh gosh. Make sure you get your seasons out, people. <laughs> Pop of cheese. Okay, what about TikTok trends and dances? Wheel it up. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Kind of. <laughs> yeah, wheel it up kind of. <laughs> Depends on the song, but with, with your songs? Yeah. Yes. Love it, love, love it. it. <laughs> okay, rom-coms. Mm, wheel it off. Really? Yeah. Why? I'm just Not for off. you. No. What sort of films do you like? Mm, thrillers. Oh, so you like to be sat on the edge of your seat. I like to, I like to have to use my brain. Right. And think about what I'm, mm. work it out. Do you know what I like? What? A good old murder mystery. Yeah, like, who's that's... done it? Me? I watch psychopathic Ooh, do you documentaries do you, do you sometimes. you take your notepad out and be like, yeah, it was that one. And I, know I, why. I like watching the real psychopaths. Really? The, well, like the real, real stories. Lives, like the I'm trying Garners, to work the... out why you're that twisted. Fair enough. It's psychology, you know. It's an yeah, and it right? makes me feel normal. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> like, oh, maybe I'm not too bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, boots. Wheel it up. Per braids. Wheel it up. Fenty hair beauty. Wheel it up. <laughs> I love Fenty. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and lastly, emotional gangster. Wheel it up to Russ. Let's Come on, go. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. <laughs> Guys, you have been here with Nyana Mena on Yeah Network, joined by the amazing, the most wonderful, the most lovely Morgan. <laughs> if you've liked this interview and you've liked what you've seen today, make sure you guys like, follow, comment, subscribe, share. You know the trend. You know subscribe. what Subscribe. If you want to have more insight into the music industry and see these exclusive interviews, you know what to do. And on that note, we're going to leave you to it. Take care. Woo! Yeah, network.